Oh, hello. Today we are doing my mid-month check-in, which is gonna be a weird video, I think, because I have already talked to you guys about a lot of the things that I've been reading. I don't know, I feel like this is almost gonna just be like a, a TBR-ish kind of situation because most of what I've read, I either have already talked to you guys about in a vlog or you're going to see it in a vlog or in my end of the month wrap up because they were hits, disappointments, or surprises. So, I'll just kind of run through this just to give you a sense of what I'm reading right now. Full disclosure, it's like 7.30 and my work phone is already blowing up because life is crazy. I put on red lipstick in hopes that it's going to like give me some giddy up and go for the day. Not working yet, but let's just manifest that for ourselves that maybe eventually it will work. So let's start with what I've already read. I've read a lot, guys. It's been pretty, uh, pretty exciting. I've really been in the mood to read, so Something, and this happened to me last January as well, something I'm thinking is that when I do that kind of like end of the year vlog that I did last year and this year where it's really quiet at work, in both cases I wasn't traveling for the holidays, it just gives me a chance to read a lot and then that kind of like gets the momentum going. And then I've also realized that I really, I forgot how much I like vlogging. It makes it easier for me to like be in the mood to read when I know I'm gonna be talking to someone about it like immediately. So I've just, I've read a lot. I've been in the mood to read a lot. And uh, let's maybe start with the fact that I have been on a side changeling binge. So I technically finished Allegiance of Honor on the first day of the year because I had like 10% left. So I polished that off that day. And I have since read three more and I wouldn't be surprised if I read another one <laughs> because I've just been really in the mood for it. I also knew, I remembered that Ocean Light was not my favorite, so I wanted to get to it while I had momentum and continue so that I didn't lose momentum. So I've already read Silver Silence, Ocean Light, and I just finished Wolf Rain last night. So I've only got two left in my overall reread, which is sad, but uh, Storm Echo also comes out this year. So I have at least three more side changeling books I get to read this year. And uh, this was not as good as I remembered. This was about what I remembered. And so was this in a good way versus in like a not as good way. So that has been a very rewarding rereading project. And I'm also like recording the podcast as I go. So that also makes me just feel like accomplished because getting ahead basically. Okay, so I'm trying to look and see what all I can actually tell you more about before I get to it. Okay, things I'm not gonna talk about because I talked about them more in another video are the books I read as a part of my snowy vlog, which you guys have seen by now. I'm in the middle of editing it, but by now you have seen, so you know there was a big hit and a big disappointment in this stack. So you can check out that video if you wanna hear more. I've read three arcs that I had on my list, one of which was a little disappointing and two of which I really liked. So those three are Never Tell by Selena Montgomery, AKA Stacey Abrams. That was her pen name when she was writing Romantic Suspense. So I read that. I read Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon, which just came out and I kind of picked it up on a whim because I'd seen, I forget who, but somebody had posted a good review for it and it just sounded like it would hit the spot. That was really good. And then The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. So I will talk about all three of those in my end of the month wrap up, but I gave Never Tell three stars and I gave Weather Girl and The Book of Cold Cases four stars. So I got to that. Then I also read To Paradise by Hanya Yanagahara, which came out, I guess, two weeks ago from when you're seeing this. And I read it the week it released and I'm vlogging about it, so you will see more of my thoughts there. I I don't know, we'll, t we'll talk more about it in the vlog. <laughs> I'm still in progress on filming that vlog, so you'll see more about this one this week. And then I guess I can tell you about all the other books that I read, because they're not gonna crop up anywhere else. So that would be these. Fat by Sander Gilman. I read this because it is helping me with a commentary video that I'm working on, the current one and a, another one that I'm thinking about. And it was pretty dry. So if you're not, you have to like, you have to be interested in the subject matter. So I don't know that the writing was excellent. And I also think it probably was more of an article than a book, but there were like little nuggets in here that I thought were really interesting. And I'm also very interested in the fact that this was written in 2008. So I just think it's interesting seeing kind of where he's writing from in terms of 
thoughts about fat people. And also he makes some really, because he's specifically talking about the language of treating obesity as an epidemic. And he specifically is contextualizing that in the wake of swine flu and some of those other <laughs> viral things that were happening around that time period. So I think reading it now in the middle of COVID is, is interesting. So anyway, good, not great, but I am glad I read it because it was helpful to me and giving me a quote polls for things that I was looking for. So this was good. Oh, this was really good. Beyond the Gender Non-Binary by, by Alok Vade Menon. This was recommended to me by Ashley from Bookish Realm. Uh, I saw this great video, I'll try to remember to link it. She did a great video responding to a list of books that people are trying to get banned from libraries. And since she is a librarian in particular, she just has an interesting perspective on that. So I'll try to remember to link that. But when she, she got so sad when she saw that this was on the list, and I just was looking for something kind of small to talk about about non-binary gender identities and I think that this is really helpful like this is very helpful nonfiction. the first half is sort of their experience as a non-binary person and then the back half is almost set up like Q&A so it'll say you know common challenges to gender non-binary identity so it's common sense that everyone is a man or a woman and then they give sort of like a description or like a response to that you are a s insignificant minority or i get that you're different but why do you need to shove it in my face keep it to yourself so i thought that that was a really smart structuring of the book and really helpful i'm going to keep this as a reference in my library just I found this really helpful. So unsurprisingly great recommendation from Ashley, very small, it's aimed at teens. So that's sort of the level of writing. And uh, yeah, this was good. Oh, The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. I have been meaning to read this for a few years now. This was so hyped up when it came out and it's, be it's become one of those books that people recommend to people a lot for thrillers in terms of a good place to start type of thing. And uh, yeah, I could definitely see this as a good first thriller. It's a blend of sort of a serial killer type story as well as secrets from the past. I will say both of the books that I have now read from CJ Tudor deal heavily with religious themes, which for me, I really like. I have like theological training. That's something I'm clearly interested in just in my real life. So I enjoy those elements in the books. So I think that is an interesting component of what they write about. So this, this did work for me. This has a dual timeline, which you guys know, not really my favorite. And in this case, this fell prey to the classic issue, which is I was far more interested in one timeline than the other that being the present, which is usually the case. I'm usually much more interested in the present timeline than the past one. It's not that the past one was bad. I just found it uninteresting comparatively. Your mileage is gonna vary there. I can totally see why people really like this one. I think I gave it three and a half. I did enjoy it. And I think especially for a debut, pretty, pretty impressive. So this I enjoyed as well. Oh, and then the last one I can talk to you guys about is Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This was Leanna's pick for the Blades and Bodice Ripper book club for the month. That is going to be over on her channel on the last Saturday of the month. So you should definitely come join us. I will say I was kind of intimidated by this. Like I put aside a whole weekend to read this because I was like, oh, this is pretty long. It's going to take me a while. I flew through this. That being said, I do also still think it's too long, <laughs> which is my biggest criticism of it. I think I would have loved this book if it had been about a third shorter. I did feel like it was too long. Now, that being said, I am somebody who doesn't necessarily love always a sort of meandering high fantasy, whereas some people really like that. If that doesn't bother you, that then this is well written and, and that won't bother you in this book. I really liked the premise of this, which is basically what if Lizzie Bennet got drafted into ye fantasy Napoleonic War. <laughs> so that's kind of the, the premise is that it's a genteel young lady and uh, her fantasy kingdom is at war with another fantasy kingdom and they are running out of men to serve. So they start drafting women as well. And so she starts off, you know, she's from a genteel family. So she has like some kind of, she's an ins ensign at the beginning. And then um, as the war progresses, she gets 
promoted. And so she finds herself, you know, dealing with the realities of commanding an army that is fighting what seems to be kind of a losing war and uh, dealing with a lot of death and grief and the rea just like the brutality and realities of war. That's really what this, this whole thing is about and how basically in war, everyone's a villain, I think is kind of the moral of this one, which yeah, I'm on board with that. Uh, I, I think it was a well done book, but like I said, I just felt like it was, it, the pacing of it was off. I did enjoy it though. The writing is super easy to read. Like I read this in a day, which surprised me. Like I, this, this is a, how long? This is a 650 book that I read in the amount of time I would usually expect to read like a 450 page book. So I, I know it's weird to say that I think it's too long when I did read it very quickly. It's not like it was hard to get through, but I just felt like it, if it had been a little tighter, it would would have been more impactful, at least for me. I also, there's a romance in here that I liked. I mean, I'm always a sucker for a romance. I don't know that it was wholly convincing. Yeah, anyway, all that to say, this wasn't like my favorite book, but I can see why people really like this and really recommend it. And I would actually recommend this as a really good place if you are intimidated by high fantasy or like a really chonky fantasy novel. I think this could be a good place to start. It's flintlock fantasy, so it's not swords and sorcery kind of vibe. There are warlocks and mages, so there is some magic, but it's not super extensive. And it really, most of the world building basically reads like Regency era Europe. So it's not intimidating world building to get into. There's not a bunch of super like made up complicated names that you gotta figure out. This is, I think could be a really good entry point into high fantasy if you're trying to get into it. So I, enjoy like I this is a B plus to me I enjoyed this I liked it I'm gonna hold on to this I and I will definitely recommend it to people it's not my personal favorite which is kind of a bummer I was kind of expecting this could be a four and a half or a five it wasn't but I did still enjoy it and I purchased this before it even got picked for book club so I was glad the book club made me go ahead and pick it up okay and then in terms of things I'm in progress on I actually have two nonfiction books that I'm almost done with. One is Disability Visibility by Alice Wong, first person stories from the 21st century. This was my audiobook, and then I, I had to give it back to the library. I would definitely recommend, especially getting the introduction, listening to the introduction on audio because it is read by the editor. And I just think it was compelling to hear her thoughts about why this book matters from her own voice. Because of her disability, she has a very specific kind of speaking cadence. And I think hearing the words with that cadence gave the words like even more weight to them. So I would recommend that. But now I'm back to the physical version. And yeah, here, here we go. This is where we left off, gaining power through communication access. So I'm almost done, but I'm in progress on that. I've got like one chapter left in Anti-Diet forget who the author is. Fantastic. I don't think this book actually has challenged me to think about how I talk about diet stuff on the channel or like things around food in general. Unhooked my necklace. So I don't think I'm going to get into a lot of specifics on this one at any point outside of my actual commentary video that I'm making on it where I can like expand a little bit more, but I love this book. I think I'd probably give it four and a half stars. We're almost done. So I think that's probably going to hold. I'm in progress on Dr. Ola Funskyler's Brain by Kirsten Menger Anderson. And I'm really enjoying this. This is a collection of short stories that are about essentially doctors in New York starting in the 1600s and coming up, I think, through the present. And it's about like different forms of quackery. So really like the writing. And overall, this one's really good, I think. And then in terms of what I write, might read next, well, there's a good chance I'm going to go ahead and plow on with this Changeling series. We'll see how that goes. I have three arcs still I'm hoping I, I read this month. I want to read The Night Shift from Alex Fenlay, Under Lock and Key from Gigi Pendendian, I think is her name, and then The Resting Place by Camila Stein, maybe? Those are the three arcs that I hope I still get to this month. They're all thrillers or mysteries, so love that. I've been in a really mystery heavy mood this month, which has been working well for me. Oh, I guess I should also mention I'm in progress on Honey Phillips's New Year's Eve sci-fi romance. So I will finish that likely. It's fine. It's not one of her better ones, but it's good. And then these are the other books that I'm thinking about reading. We'll see what happens. They are Birds of a Lesser Paradise by Megan Mayhew Bergman. One of the Patrick Melrose novels by Edward St. Aubin. Uh, Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders or Home by Marilyn Robinson. So those are kind of 
on my radar to maybe be Reed's ex. So yeah, I think that's what is going on right now. I've accomplished a lot. I'm hoping that I'm gonna keep that energy and I'm gonna try to keep going while I'm in the mood to read this much. I'm gonna try to just knock things out and uh, enjoy it while it lasts because I'm sure at some point I will not be in as much of the mood to read, but it's, it's going right now. So how has your January reading been so far? Let me know that in the comments below what you thought about any of the books I talked about. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.